Good morning, this is Dr. Scott Lively. It's March 30th, a cool day, overcast. I'm here on the farm at the campfire. Chickens are out making a lot of noise. Thunderbird is crowing like crazy. I've had to restart this video like four times. Is it just so, uh, so loud? This time I'm just gonna press on. Hey, you guys, be quiet over there. They're not gonna listen. But uh, that's just the way it is on the, on the farm. Uh, today, you know, how can I, how could I govern a state if I can't even govern my own uh, flock of hens? But, uh, it's a lot of responsibilities these days for people who are governors, and that responsibility is being abused uh, badly in Democrat uh, states, especially the, the, the deepest of the deep blue states, California, uh, New York, Massachusetts, uh, Illinois, and uh, really terrible, unconstitutional crackdown, suspension of, of basic civil liberties, exactly the opposite uh, of the type of approach that I would take. So let me just give you what my approach would be if I were a governor today. I ran for governor of Massachusetts in 2018. If I had won, it would have been my responsibility to provide effective leadership during the coronavirus pandemic in my state. Uh, following is the approach I would have taken. Some of this is obviously from hindsight, but most is just how my constitutionalist presuppositions and knowledge of geopolitics and the culture war would naturally play out. First, because I assumed from the start that this crisis was being orchestrated to take down the Trump economy, I would have assembled the diverse brain, brain trust to war game the likely scenarios regarding leftist strategies and tactics and effective countermeasures uh, during the coming battle in my own state and opened a dialogue with like-minded governors. High on the priority list would be A, neutralizing the all too predictable media fear-mongering and weaponization of the crisis for political gain uh, through public shaming of them on social media and in live demonstrations at media outlets. Uh, and B, uh, bracing for economic shockwaves, which would be inevitable if this truly were the next campaign following the Russian collusion hoax and impeachment scam. These adversaries are powerful and they always punch hard. Even though they can eventually be beaten, they always do major damage first. And, and we would need to brace for that. Second, I would not perpetuate the false notion that it's the government's job to solve the problem, but would actively enlist the people in the battle from the start, in a sense deputizing whatever part of the population uh, that would be willing to fight uh, the outbreak, volunteers, and giving them practical tasks to perform like sanitizing public spaces, monitoring elderly neighbors, and carrying a ready supply of, of face masks, other supplies, and information sheets uh, to give out to people who manifest seasonal cold and flu symptoms. Uh, what we want are communities of self-reliant families, not a population of serfs ruled by elite puppet masters. This is the opposite of the unconstitutional lockdown strategy backed by police state surveillance and punishments. This also means I would not look to the federal government for, as the all-powerful nanny, but use the crisis to showcase my state self-sufficiency model of government that I actually campaigned on. Third, I would closely monitor the data out of China and the earliest secondary infection sites regarding the nature of the disease and the most effective response mechanisms. Thus, I would have followed the highly successful South Korea and Taiwanese models targeting resources toward the most at-risk groups and the most likely to spread disease activities. Early on, we knew that the elderly were most severely impacted, so one of my first acts would be hardening nursing, nursing homes and retirement communities and ramping up preventive care measures. The next step would be travel restrictions and sheltering policies for the very elderly and those with serious health challenges. Fourth, I would have hardened the entry points for my state and denied entry or quarantined 
anyone from known epicenters. I think the idea of a 14-day quarantine that uh, Israel, for example, is using is a smart idea from people coming from the hotspots. Fifth, uh, knowing from the 2017-2018 flu season that hospital capacity and equipment was going to be a big issue, I would have given special focus on preparing additional beds and necessary resources in advance. Sixth, as soon as the miracle drug hydroxychloroquine emerged, I would have quickly acquired and deployed it, not letting existing drug approval laws get in the way of treating the most severe cases with it. Frankly, if Democrat governors can suspend virtually the entire Constitution to serve their fascist response model, I could suspend the obstructionist drug policies and would do so without hesitancy for those likely to die under existing legal treatment options. And I heartily applaud President Trump for pushing through uh, the, that policy at the federal level. I would do the same thing at the state level. Uh, seventh, and most importantly, I would have begun this campaign with a call to prayer and repentance uh, and urge the public to actively seek God's intervention. I would not ban church gatherings, but would recommend a quick shift to the biblically superior uh, small group home church model and convert the large church buildings and complexes into sanitary refuge centers for infected but asymptomatic persons. These big churches with their commercial kitchens and, and extensive uh, facilities would be perfect for that type of use. and. Uh, and I think that, the, that uh, most churches would probably voluntarily uh, uh, agree to this and, uh, and everyone would benefit uh, from getting back to the uh, biblical model of gathering together in small family-like home church uh, settings. So anyway, that's my approach. Uh, it's not comprehensive, it's not uh, exhaustive, uh, but it is a general framework for how I would respond uh, to the uh, the crisis if I were the governor of a state. And uh, so with that, I uh, will uh, say I'll talk to you next time. God bless you and uh, stay safe.